So, it's time to go beyond Plus Ultra once again for a darker than usual episode of Boku no Hero Academia. You can't control the way I die. I choose the way I die. Yeah, I had no idea ending was this troubled of a character. I was just reading about his quirk, and I'm like, oh my god, that quirk is so weird. You know, it was weird, because yeah, they mentioned it at one point when they were arresting him, and I'm just sitting there like, because I thought it was all paint at first, but no, it's literally just white paint lines. Would the yellow lines on the road be affected? I assume not, because he wasn't able to pick them up right away. If he would paint the lines himself, could he manipulate that paint? See, the question becomes, can he just manipulate all white paint? Does it have to be dried white paint, or does it specifically have to be dried in a line? I, well, according to the Boku no Hero wiki, road markings. It has to be, he can't just paint it on his arm and use that? Let me go to the Boku no Hero wiki so I can read what it says here. His quirk is White Line. White Line allows Ending to control any lane lines painted on the road. See, I wonder if that's just what is shown or what is officially listed by uh, the, the punk, uh, the, the creator. Hmm. Like, that's where I'm at. Like, is that only because that is what is shown? Or is that outright Horikoshi, the, the author's actual definition for this quirk? I am not sure if he would be able to use it on all white paint. I'm not saying just white paint, even if it was just white lines. Like the quirk and name implies. Hmm. Because, I mean, like, and even then, he had to use a booster to get the effect he was getting here. I'm curious what, how effective he is without the booster. It would be hilarious to say, White Line, I challenge you to a fight in that field five miles away from the road. You just pull a Dragon Ball and you fly off into a desolate canyon. <laughs> That's where we're fighting. But there's no white lines! How am I supposed to fight? Ow. But I'm useless out here! <laughs> That'd be... <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Vegeta smashes into the ground. He can't use his powers because there's no white lines around. <gasps> Damn it, Kakarot! I can't fight like this! I need to be in a city! <laughs> Yeah. It'd be like Nappa having the fist of the nose hair, but having shaved his nose hair. Nappa? You mean Bobo Bo? I was trying to stick with the Dragon Ball references oh, okay. while, while, while <laughs> sliding <laughs> in some of that. Because <laughs> Nappa's bald. Yes. He, I'm sure he's not... He shaved his head, right? He probably shaved his nose hair out, and he's like, Ah, oh, damn it, Vegeta! I really wanted to fight, but I just shaved my nose hair yesterday. It hasn't grown back yet. So, I told you I had a slightly crazy conspiracy here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm half thinking, and this is only like 10% real, maybe like 90% joking here, that Bakugo kind of has the hots for Shoto's sister by saying like, hey, uh, why don't you give me that recipe? Um, sure, I'll text it to you. And Shoto is just cock blocking him saying, no, you, you can't text Bakugo. I don't think that's what was said. I'm recipe pretty the, sure that's not what was said. The recipe for the Mapo Tofu. No, that part you got. It's but like, I don't think, I think Todoroki just said, I'll text it to you. I don't think he was cock blocking in any way. Like I said, that was a joke because he was asking Yumi to give him the recipe. But Toy is like, no, no, 
I'll do it. I think he said no, though, like he was doing anything like that. Like, I'm, I'm going back now to check this. Because I'm, I'm 90% sure that is not the way that happened. All right, here we go. I got the scene. Yeah, here we go. He says, teach me the recipe. And then she goes, sure. Well, maybe, because he just says, I'll have her text it to me. But, I mean, that's also kind of more convenient, because who knows when they're going to see each other again, for one. And for two, the other thought, it, like, in my head is just, like, Todoroki, based on that one, that one point that we saw when uh, Mount Lady was trying to, like, uh, it, interview him. I was going to say interrogate. I knew that was the wrong word. But tried to interview him, right? And he just did not get any of the co- like the social c- cues of what was going on. Yeah. I don't think Todoroki is clever enough to pick that up if that is in any way canon. Okay, okay. So, yeah, between that and just the convenience of, like, here, I'll give you the recipe myself. It's just easier this way, because, again, who knows when he and Fuyumi are going to see each other. But like I said, I'm like... 90% kidding about that. I mean, fair. I'm just trying to figure out if there was any, like, legitimate thing to that, and it just doesn't seem like it to me. And he was still angry saying it. Like, that was delicious. Give me the recipe. That's literally Bakugo 24-7. He does not... He I lie. He does turn it off. Barely. It's like 5 percent of his time a day is just not being angry no he goes from furious to grumpy yeah and then the other the other uh setting is sleep that's oh maybe the mapu tofu was so good it made him sweat giving him a power boost hey look you know maybe that's why he was able to do it so quickly you know use his quirk so quickly before is because of the Mapu Tofu giving him so much sweat from the spice. It could very well be. Hmm. That's how he'll get through the winters. <laughs> Eat a bunch of Mapu Tofu. That'd actually be a clever way of getting around it. You want to sweat a lot and just have that stored up for later? Just eat a bunch of spicy food. Hmm. There's not a lot going on in, like, the first half, it feels like. A lot of it's just, you know... A little bit of rehashing with what happened previous episode. Uh, them leaving and us seeing, like, ending. As awkward as that name is to say, but seeing ending the villain. I guess spying at one point on Endeavor in the past. Uh, I guess it was like seven years ago or so. And just kind of being obsessed with being destroyed by the man's anger. He seems like some kind of, like masochistic yandere is like, please kill me, Endeavor. Well, here's the other thing, too. And and this struck me when that's what he shouted at Endeavor. I'm like, like, I paused it for a second. And I'm just like, oh, oh, we're doing the Batman quandary. OK, heroes don't kill. And this guy's like, the only way you're getting your son back is if you kill me. So is he suicidal? See, the way he kind of worded it here, it makes me feel like he really does not care. He is so ambivalent whether he lives or dies if he can break someone else. Hmm. That's the way I kind of took it. Like, he wants Endeavor to just... Like, he wants to break a hero, essentially, and Endeavor probably seemed like the most likely hero to do that with how angry Endeavor seemed to be at the time. Hmm. And it's why when, like, Endeavor is calming himself down, he's not so angry, he's just, I don't know, disappointed in himself. When he's talking to Natsuo and, and like, explaining how he wants to atone, you just see ending in the background just being like, No! No, don't do it! Your fire! It's going out! No! Like, he's, he's losing that, like, inner fury that ending would have used to just push a hero over the breaking point to become a villain or to become someone that is no longer a hero. Hmm. Yeah. If nothing else, he's there to blur the lines. Oh, clever. Cause I mean, think about it right now. We're kind of getting that point of like, 
even not right now, even before when we were talking about uh fuck dude with the beak, um overload. Uh that was his name, right? Overload? I think. Overhaul, that was his name. When Overhaul was talking about blur like blurring the lines because having them both having like playing both sides to use it, use his drugs. Um and he did not care nor see a side in his mind. They were all the same thing. And essentially creating that war between heroes and villains and just having them constantly having to use boosters to one overtake the other. Right? Mm-hmm. This is kind of doing it on a far more like I guess social scale of blurring the lines, of forcing a hero to murder someone in order to save another. Mm-hmm. Like giving them that binary choice. It, like it immediately struck me as a Batman thing, especially from like the. Uh, it was Nolan, right? Nolan that did like the Dark Knight Returns and stuff yeah. like that one. Yeah, That's... it reminded me of that point in the Joker, uh, where the Joker was there and they were having to like decide which um, which boat to save. Essentially, at that point, um, the same idea of like you need to break your code, your moral codes, and then by doing that, especially if it's the number one in this case. What is that going to leave the world with? I just felt like since he was calling himself a Nomu, which isn't really human, he doesn't think of himself as anything. So I'm just like, oh, this guy's suicidal. Well, it's it's that maybe, but also maybe his way of rationalizing to try and make Endeavor murder him again. Like... Just another way to try and mentally manipulate him into killing him. Because the Nomu didn't look human, right? No one, no one's going to tell Endeavor that he didn't just kill a monster. Like, that thing was no longer, like, was not human, nor, as far as anyone was aware, could have ever been human, right? Right. In this case, a person that looks human, or at least, you know, as close to a human with a quirk might look, uh, if people outright saw Endeavor do that, or hell, even Endeavor himself doing that, it would both mentally and socially shatter a hero, or the idea of heroes. Especially now with Endeavor being in such like a weird mental place with his development. Like in him trying to figure out a way to, to like fix things. And even then, I don't know if he's made the right decision by the end of this this episode. Like, the the, the post-credits point of this is him literally like, building their his family a new place to live that will be peaceful and away from all the bad memories and then shutting himself off from them essentially even after it seems like Natsuo is at the same point where um where Shoto is where like it seems like they're both getting ready to forgive him but Fiyumi is more forgiving than her brothers right I believe Fuyumi is, and that's probably in part because she's a elementary school teacher. Like she sees what it means to have a loving family when she sees the like the kids get picked up or whatever. I would assume. Mm-hmm. My thought is that like they, it, my thought is that she being the oldest one right now, because who the fuck knows what happened to Toya at this point besides not being around slash dead. Or the other red-haired kid that we saw in the flashback. She's currently the oldest one that we're aware of that's alive. She's probably the one who has, is mature enough to understand and even, like, be willing to try. She's the one willing to extend the olive branch and try to help put things back together as, as much as can be done. Hmm. Even if I would say in the end... Endeavor was not ever going to be part of that that family picture that she wants. And hell, Endeavor even points out to Natsuo, like, during their little talk near the end there about, like, how, look, you may not be trying to for me, but you're trying for your brother and your sister. You're trying to do this for them, even if you end up walking away. You're attempting it. If nothing else, you are a kind person just for that. So is Endeavor losing his, well, not like losing his edge, but becoming kinder and softer now that he is the number one? I don't 
know if that's it. I don't know if that's the specific way you would you would go about it. I think the way I'm looking at this, the, the way I'm I'm kind of internalizing his arc at this point is more along the lines of like he's rediscovering what he wants to protect, right? Like what it what he want what he wants or what it means to be a hero. Cuz before his entire life was just dedicated to being try or trying to be better than All Might, right? That's the only thing that was ever driving him. Now that he technically, a he can't reach that goal because All Might's no longer a thing, in so far as he is a hero, and two, he's still taken the number one spot, but not in the way he wanted. His goal is gone. He no longer has a reason to to strive to be number one because he is. And he no longer has a reason to beat All Might because All Might can no longer be beaten at his prime anymore. Like, everything he wanted is gone. So, to me, it's A, a rediscovery of why am I a hero anymore to begin with? And to a realization of, like, well, kind of like as his dream sequence shows to protect the happiness that his family has. That is his discovery of this is why I want to be a hero, essentially, even if he hasn't said it in those exact words yet. His goal is to essentially be number one now and protect his family as much as possible. Hell, literally him cutting himself off from his family might be another way of protecting them. Like, moving them out, leaving him in this place... And hopefully, in by doing that, keeping villains from targeting them. You know, the way Natsuo was just targeted now. I mean, hell, as far as I'm aware, for the most part, I at least that we've been shown yet, All Might's never had that problem of having someone close enough that could be targeted by villains. Everyone that we've seen that he really has any real connection with has already had their own quirk and the ability to defend themselves. Right. But his family are elemental quirk users. We don't know what to what degree, though. Like, we've never seen Natsu or Fuyumi use their quirks. At least not that I'm remembering, anyway. Fair point. So we, we don't know if it's, you know... We don't know if, like, all Natsuo's got, for instance, is just, like, a little flip lighter of a thumb... Like, maybe Fuyumi can chill some things with her with her ice, maybe? Who knows? Like, it may not be something that's great or okay, strong. Okay, kids, who wants snow cones? Yay, snow cones! Yeah, there you go. Shave dice, here you go. Oh my god, that, that'll be a great way to use your weak quirk. Become, like, a, a food vendor or something. <laughs> hey, look, man. Quirks can be quite useful. You can use them to do some cool things. And did we say that Deku's mother, with her, like, very, very slight magnetism quirk, could do something? It's less magnetism, more telekinesis. Um, she said she could pull small objects toward her. She didn't say spe uh, specify magnets, as f or like, metal, as far as I'm aware. Uh, okay, I, I was just misremembering. Either that, or couldn't put it into words because I forgot telekinesis. It's fine. I mean, I believe when she demonstrated it the one time, it was like with a pen. Um, but no, like, little mini quirk could totally be useful for, like, like to just make jobs easier in general like that, right? Yeah. Like, uh... Like, ending would be great for refurbishing uh, the uh, the paint lines if he would have been, like, a normal person. We should really do a random musings about this. What? Instead of quirks? Or instead of, like, JoJo stands, we use quirks? Yeah, yeah. We, we could spend, like, 30 minutes talking about this. Well, because literally, you, much like stands, quirks can be anything at this point. Hmm... Like, there has yet to be shown a limit on what court, what a court can do. So next week, what do you think is going to happen? Like, it seems we're going into the next arc ahead and not backwards. 
Yes. Um, and it's because it's from what Kaiser said the last time I I'd watched. Now, as of this recording, they had just posted the uh, the episode eighteen review, which I have not looked at because I want my own thoughts and feelings out here before I watch that. But when I watched the seventeen one, they had he had mentioned it's like it's literally because that episode, the one where they were all eating at Todoroki's house, would have been the end of the arc had they gone in order. Like, the, it's the season, I mean, had they gone in order. Technically, according to the Boku no Hero Wiki, this was the final episode of the Endeavor Agency arc. Like, this still ties into the dinner. Yeah. I should have, then it's probably this one. This one specifically would have been the end of the arc, and it would not have been a good one to go out on. It would have been a kind of, like, minimal. Because in every single season, we've ended with a big banger of a fight, right? Mm-hmm. This is kind of a kind of a murmur on that. Um, and kind of like, other people have mentioned this, and I can definitely see it myself. The pacing in this season has been really weird, and it's definitely taken away from it. Like compared to prior seasons, yeah. like the real, the real natural build toward a big fight has not really hit with this season. It's kind of been scattered shot. I know nothing about the. Oh crap! Um, what was it? My villain academia arc, or whatever the technical name of it was. But maybe there's going to be a big fight between the villains. Maybe, but it doesn't look like that's where they're going with the end of this. Yeah. We might get the My Villain in the next, at the start of the next season. Who knows? Hmm. So, Joy- Um, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, okay. we, we didn't even get to talk about what's happening in the next episode. Uh, like with the preview. Okay. We kind of skipped past that. Oops. We started and then we got sidetracked. Oops. Um, they're going to talk to Portal Guy. I forget his name. Starts with a K. Uh... And they're bringing in Aizawa and Present Mike. And in one of those shots, Present Mike looks real freaked out. Like, he does not look happy about it. So what do you think he's freaked out about? I have no idea, but whatever it is looks like it's in the past. Because we kind of get, like, a shot of what looks to me... And and it's the shot, if you remember, it's the shot that has... um, Three characters walking across a crosswalk, beetle style. Oh. And I'm looking at it, right? And my first thought was like, who the hell are these guys? Like, I had to freeze frame it for a second. Because it is at a distance, so it's hard to tell. And I'm like, well, they're AU students, or they're UA students, based on the uniform. And I was trying to put together who they were. We're gonna get some part of a flashback. Because I realized it's Aizawa, Present Mike, and Vlad. Oh. Young kid versions of them. And by the way, um, Portal Face Guy is Kurogiri. Yeah, Kurogiri, that's right, because he's it's black something. Fog. Black fog. Ah, is that what Giri means? Fog? Um, according to the book on here, Wiki, Kurogiri, literally black fog. Oh, there you go. I knew Kuro was black, but I didn't, I didn't know for sure what Giri meant. Same, same. Um, but yeah, whatever it is, whatever they get out of them must have been something from the past or something that happened in the past or wh- whatever the reason it triggers, they're getting a flashback. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, here's a thought. Maybe it will start with the next arc jump back to the my villain arc and the final few episodes will be the will be him telling the heroes what's mm-hmm. been going on maybe but i don't know what it would really do to reveal it to them we, we also get a bit of a meetup back with the kids at the classroom which is great we get to we could probably get to hear a little bit about what each of them have done we get, uh, yeah, Aizawa and Present Mike go to meet with Kurogiri. Oh, shit. Uh, what's his name? Super speed dude that trained Deku before. I'm blanking on his name. Um, Gran Torino? There you go. That's it. Yep, he's there, too. Yeah, there's that freaked out look from him. 
them sitting there. And then, yeah, we get the shot, the Beatles-esque shot of those three heading off to what I assume is class. Hmm. Heck, even even Aizawa's got a point of just being like, fuck. Where you, like, you just see him like holding his face with just his eye peeking out from his bangs. Like, whatever Kuro Giri is going to reveal, it's fucking bad. Well, we're going to find out what it is on the next episode of Boku no Hero Academia. Yep, let's see if they can fit these 17 chapters into these last seven episodes. Yay! Well, six now, actually. Really? I thought it was going to be 25. Wait. No, then it is seven. I, I was thinking 24, but if it's 25, then it's seven. I think it is like 17 chapters or something, though. Uh, wait, which... This is 18, right? Yes. Yeah, then it is seven, yeah. All right, there you go. In, Can they fit it all in seven episodes? Unless they decide to do 26 this season, but I don't really know because they've been doing 25 for the past three, so... I don't see why they wouldn't stick with it. Yeah. So until next week, I'll catch everybody later. I'll just off myself now. It's fine. I chose this method. Oh, there, there. Everything will be okay. It'll never be okay again.